You're listening to TF Talk Weekly, part of the TF Talk network of podcasts and live streams, where we give you the most relevant current stories in your fandom and more, all within 30 quick minutes or less. I'm your host, Mr. Starscream, and I'll be your guide to everything worth talking about that transformed since last episode. Discover more of our great shows at tftalk.net. We're changing the format today for a special New York Comic Con 2019 Aftermath edition of TF Talk Weekly. Instead of a segment based show, we are focusing on a single interview with Anthony Brucalli, founder and operator of TFU.info. He had the fortune of attending this year's New York Comic Con, and better yet, he found his way into two invite only events thrown by Hasbro. Without further ado, here's our discussion. I am Anthony Bricali, owner operator Madman behind uh, TFU.info, uh, the world's longest running transforming toy archive. I launched the site back in 2002, and uh, it serves kind of as uh, the Transformers answer to Yojo.com. Uh, at least that's uh, kind of what it, you know got phrased as uh, when it originally came out. Uh, in addition to that, I've been part of the fan community since the late 90s. And uh, I do event coverage as well with Toy Fair, New York Comic Con and uh, those sorts of events. I also host my own podcast called Transformers University, where we chronologically cover the Transformers brand uh, in every single facet possible. Uh, and I think that that kind of sums me up. So how how did TFU.info actually start? Because to me, it's always just been one of those staples that's always there. It started because it wasn't there. Uh, you know, there was a conversation I've had with with a number of people like and, I, and the reason I say it's the Transformers answer to Yojo.com is that uh, when there wasn't a TFU.info, people were always like there should be a Yojo.com of Transformers. So I kind of went and looked at that site and um, taught myself. Uh, a whole bunch of HTML. And then uh, I had some time uh, between graduating college and finding really my first like full time job and um, kind of just went to work uh, for about a year and a half uh, between summers and school and everything else and uh, uh, built it from scratch and contacted people and took photos of my entire collection and then found people around the world to help me with photos before there were camera phones to make uh, what was the toy archive at TFU. And then that's kind of how it came about. I had a conversation with someone, you know, basically saying, you know, why isn't this thing a thing? And he looked at me and goes, why don't you do it? And I thought to myself, well, yeah, why don't I do it? So that's uh, that's kind of how it came about. In your words, like, what do you think makes TFU.info unique amongst all the other websites that have come and gone and are still around? I think one, it's the um, it's the simplicity of it. Uh, my limited computer skills have have kind of left it kind of be of its time in some ways, but which makes it really easy to go through. Uh, I think there's a, a simplicity to how the characters are organized. So if you know you need an, uh, you know, you want to find out about Optimus Prime, you can kind of scroll down to the history of the character down at the bottom from G1 Optimus and see, you know, in one take every toy that's ever been made of him in chronological order. And then uh, also see how that mold's been remolded or repainted and then additional versions of the character. I think that's kind of the, the heart and soul of the website. This weekend... New York Comic Con occurred 2019 and you actually reached out to me saying, hey, you know, I would help you uh, do some coverage on this because I'm going to be there. And, and I personally was not able to attend this year. So I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us at uh, TF Talk Weekly. And I guess I just wanted to know, like, how many of these New York Comic Cons have you been to? I think this is my fifth or sixth in the row. I, I, I started going in 2014. Uh, oddly enough, I used to work for Major League Baseball, so I never had October to myself because uh, that's the middle of the playoffs. Uh, so uh, the, I left there in 2014 and I, the first thing I did was said was I'm going to go to New York Comic Con. <laughs> and uh, I think ever since then, I've gone every year. And did you go specifically to look at Transformers stuff? Because I know back in the day there wasn't a huge Hasbro presence like there kind of, there kind of is now, right? Uh, well, it, it's it's weird. It, it, the term Hasbro presence is kind of misleading. Uh, there there is no Hasbro presence at New York Comic Con. They don't have an official booth. They don't have uh, anything 
of their own there. So Unicron was on display at the Pop Insider booth. Hasbro did an interview on the Sci-Fi Wire stage with the folks from Sci-Fi Wire, but anything specifically uh, run by Hasbro was not on site. All the Hasbro stuff happens off-site uh, in an unofficial capacity to New York Comic Con, but around the events of the convention so that it can be done uh, within that context. Okay, interesting. Thank you for the, the clarification. So you did see Unicron on the floor. Was it the first time you'd seen it? Yes, in person, for sure. It is enormous. Uh, it is a lot bigger than pictures let on, uh, especially when you start to see it next to some of the things it comes with, uh, such as the slug figures, which are incredibly tiny. Uh, probably, you know, the size of uh, the point on a ballpoint pen. Uh, it, they are really small. Um, you know, yeah, the colors seem better in person than they did in pictures. And, and, and it, the enormity of it, the whole figure it really can't be captured in photos uh, as much as it is being near it. I'm going to take a wild guess that you have <laughs> backed this thing. Uh, it took me a while to uh, justify the, the cost and to really, uh, you know, make sure I had the funds in place. Uh, but yeah, ultimately, once it passed 5,000, I was like, I, I, I have a feeling this is going to get done. I want to back it. And that's when I backed it. And, you know, in retrospect, when I was thinking about it, uh, probably just last night, you know, it's that six hundred dollars. It's not really a lot more. It's actually probably less than doing an entire run of BotCon exclusives uh, at a BotCon. If you think that it was, you know, three ninety nine at the fan club rate to do a Primus package, plus you know two hundred and ninety somewhat dollars for the show souvenirs. Um, that's already more than $600 and you have to go there and cart it all home yourself. So after putting in that perspective, I feel like the burn isn't nearly as bad uh, as I thought it was. I would agree with you on that. So Unicron did fund, you know, that, that was kind of an exciting thing. I don't know if you did talk to anyone in an official capacity about Unicron. Was there any discussion amongst like Hasbro people at New York Comic Con? Not about the funding. What did come up, and, and it's something that I'm glad I actually got recorded, uh, was, you know, John Warden flat out said, and, and I, is that this toy is not going to be repainted. It's not going to be remolded. It's not going to be reused. This is your one shot at getting Unicron. Uh, you either do it or you don't. There will not be a, another Unicron produced if Unicron gets funded. This is the only time it will get produced. And, and if it didn't get funded, it wasn't going to get made in any way. So at least in this this version of the mold. So I'm glad it got funded. Uh, but for those thinking that there's going to be a, a Takara release down the line or some sort of special edition down the line at a cheaper price, it's not happening. Well, there you have it. <laughs> I, I did see that video. I wasn't aware that it was yours. That's that's great to know. One other big reveal at the actual Comic Con was the Zarek figure. And did you get a good look at that or were you just in the crowd watching? I was in the crowd watching. I was about three rows back from the stage. So, I mean, I got as good as a look as anyone else did because it was up on the screen above the stage. Uh, it, it appears that it, it is a Zarek as the head to Mega Zarek, which is then the head to Scorponok. But it was it's a grayscale, so it's it's kind of tricky to see. The cool thing was from where I was sitting, I could kind of see it on the couch uh, between John and Ben before uh, they announced it. The last few years, this has kind of been their um, the pattern is they show something of their Titan, whether it's Triptychon's leg or Omega Supreme's tank mode, and this time a Scorponok head. Yeah, and Predator King's wings one year. So I mean, it's it's always that little sci-fi panel where they do that. Well, it's, that's that's awesome that you got to see it in person. You said there was something that happened off-site that wasn't actually at Comic Con, but was there at the same time. Can you can you tell us about that? Sure. So. Uh, there were actually two events, but uh, I think the one you're referring to is the the unboxing. So that morning before the Hasbro uh, interview at the sci-fi stage, uh, the folks at Hasbro had us uh, and a couple other fan sites out for an unboxing event. So we got to unbox Siege Wave 5. Uh, we had about an hour and a half to do so. Uh, and so they kind of give us the figures, not all at once, but in small waves. So. They start with battle masters and work their way up to leader class. And and during the course of that, I've uh, gotten uh, got to unbox uh, Rung Singe, which is the battle master that goes with Spinister. 
uh, at the MicroMaster level, we got to unbox the Rumble, the Red One, uh, and Rat Bat two pack, along with the uh, MicroMaster two pack of Power Punch and Direct Hit. We also got to unbox Spinister and Crosshairs at the Deluxe scale, Voyager Ape Face, and Leader Class Astro Train. Wow, that's that's a lot. Um, <laughs> so that's the whole wave. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so which impressed you the most, or which gave you the biggest surprise? The one that surprised me the most was Spinister, uh, how that leg transformation works. And he has two cockpits uh, that are independent pieces. They don't, uh, they're not halves of a single cockpit. There's one with landing gear on it and there's one without. And the one with landing gear becomes the main cockpit of the helicopter and the one that isn't kind of folds underneath the helicopter vehicle. It almost looks like a GI Joe type vehicle. And uh, overall, that was just a cool like engineering concept and the way his head flips around and uh, the back of the helicopter forms. Uh, it's it's simple, but it's elegant and it's really, really uh, nice deluxe. Well, I think uh, IDW fans will be looking forward to that figure. It sounds like you were excited. Was there a general vibe of other people in the room? Could you read the room at all? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I think most people were, the thing with Spinister was those legs on top of it being kind of really cool once you figured them out were hard to figure out. <laughs> There's these times where that room gets real quiet because everyone's kind of focused on whatever they're doing. I actually brought help with me the first time. So it was very much a divide and conquer uh, method to what we were doing to some extent. So while either one of us would take the robot mode, and the other one's like, all right, transform this so we can do photos of the vehicle mode. You know, I, I personally had a, you know, as a fan of IDW, was really happy to see a rung figure in any form. So just kind of marveling at that. Frenzy is surprisingly tricky uh, to transform because his arms don't necessarily go the way you would think right out of the package. There's, you know, there's a little bit of trepidation when you're taking that stuff out because you don't want to break it because you you have to give it back. And then uh, we found out at the end, that was the big surprise is they were like, you know what, take take him home. And uh, which they didn't do for us last year when we got to unbox Siege Wave 1. Uh, they made us give those back. And this year they were like, you know what? Yeah, there's no reason for you to give those back. Why don't you just take them all home? Yeah, I heard about that, too. <laughs> and I was pretty jealous because I wasn't able to be there this year. That has never happened before. So uh, very exciting. No, my my reaction was really like there, I think there was a, a bit of stunned surprise um, among the folks who were there that uh, that they were actually really letting us take them home. And then there was a mad scramble to for those who were collecting packaging or instructions or, or whatever to dig through the uh, garbage boxes we had made to find all the things that they were getting rid of that they needed back. Oh, that's really funny. I would assume there was staff on hand, probably Ben and John to answer questions or other staff. So John was... No, actually, John was not on hand until the very end when he had to leave for the sci-fi panel. So he basically came out and he was in another area that was curtained off, which would eventually be where we saw the uh, Earthrise stuff in the afternoon. It was Ben and a little bit of Ransan, uh, who you may remember from the uh, the Unicron videos, and uh, one of the other Hasbro marketing uh, folks, a uh, woman by the name of Rachel, who uh, I just met for the first time uh, when we were there. Cool. Well, well, with them on hand, you know, a lot of people are asking questions and I know it's a busy time, especially if you're playing with all these toys in hand. Was there anything that like you maybe caught information wise that maybe wasn't widely reported because things just get missed in, in the heat of the moment? Any sort of discussions that we just might not have heard about yet? Oh, man. Uh, from that session, not so much. From the unboxing, the unboxing is what it is. So the toys are, you know, as they're released. I think um, in the afternoon session with Earthrise, uh, because we're rapid firing questions either at them or having people tweet at us or send questions to us on you know, YouTube or whatever, there's a there's a lot of questions and answers being fired out. A couple of things probably worth noting uh, with generations. Cliff Jumper is a deluxe. Uh, a lot of people were, were or how big is he? He's a little smaller than your average deluxe, but he's made up for in size by having larger accessories. So he has his big gun. Uh, that gun has the the, stand, the tripod stand on it, which then becomes the skis for his alternate vehicle mode. Astrotrain will be sold uh, both 
in Siege in Wave 5 and in Wave 1 of Earthrise, uh, but will still have the battle damage. He's a straight repack as far as we know as of right now. I don't think they're going to do another run of him for that first wave. I'm trying to think what else off the top of my head. Uh, the roller that was on hand uh, that was shown in uh, the Optimus Prime trailer, uh, that was mine. I brought that with me to see if it would fit in the trailer, and Hasbro was kind enough to indulge me uh, in doing that. Oh, and then with Cyberverse. The other thing with Cyberverse, uh, we're getting deluxe scale figures. They will retail for $19.99, and they contain uh, the McAdam Build-A-Figure, and there are uh, eight pieces to that Build-A-Figure, so it'll be two uh, spread over two ways. Yeah, that's that's really exciting. And so that McAdam figure obviously will not transform, right? No, it does not transform. It is just a McAdam action figure. Also, people had asked about BotBots. There was no studio series on display. There was no BotBots on display. We asked about BotBots actually in the unboxing group, and uh, they said, stay tuned for London Comic Con, which is the end of October. So we should have in a couple of weeks uh, more information on series four of BotBots, which uh, they said series four. So I'm, I'm assuming there is going to be a series four. Oh, that's excellent news. <laughs> Did not catch much of the bot boss news on there. Let's just move on to the afternoon event completely and talk about Earthrise. So you didn't get to mess with any of the Earthrise toys. They were just on display in that diorama, correct? Correct. So what stood out for you? Uh, so what stood out for me is the play pattern. Uh, it's very base focused. The weaponizers are the MicroMaster bases, you know, at least, you know, with Ironworks and I just presume that's what we'll see from next from this wave to the next but the battle masters are now ramps that interconnect the bases which is a, an interesting play pattern and a terrible job if you're a part of the autobot army that your job is either to be a road or shield for another robot yeah that's too bad for a little sound barrier there right yes yeah, too bad for him but a great pun with his name he is a sound barrier you know, the wheel jack looks really cool. I know a lot of people think he's going to be Sunstreaker. I'm kind of in that camp uh, at the moment. The cliff jumper looks really good. He is small. It's very much in the same vein as like Studio Series Jazz, where it's a smaller deluxe with, with a little bit more uh, in terms of accessories. And uh, Hoist looks really good. I know people are kind of upset. The Optimus has great fists. I think that's how he's going to be. Uh, it's, we get other Optimuses in a line usually or from selects. So I imagine there will be one with blue fists down the line. And uh, Grapple looked pretty cool, and he has that uh, weird uh, hand attachment. Uh, things get really crazy and busy in that room. Uh, and, you know, that hand attachment, I didn't see if that was a, a five millimeter peg that flips around over, instead of his fist and you plug the attachment on, or if that's a, a single piece on its own. But I, I think it's a good example of like just how crazy things get. The little details like that, as much as everybody wants them, we can't always get them. Well, my. Uh... You know, radio pseudonym is Mr. Starscream, so I would say you're you're missing one major oh my goodness. major guy there. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am. Totally forgot about that Starscream, but that Starscream is beautiful. It looks great. As one of the people who was with me put it, and he's he's a bit younger than me, so it was kind of an interesting perspective. Uh, he was a kid when Classics came out, and he was like, it's Classics, Classic Starscream. And I think that's probably the best way to put it. It's the Classics Engineering uh, uh, reimagined and done at a larger scale, almost as a tribute to that mold. Yeah, it really does seem that way. And that was not what I was expecting. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that much retreading, but it is very cool to see it at a Voyager scale because it is it is a great mold. It always was like a great um, engineering scheme for an updated Starscream. And I'm really happy to see it. Yeah, me too. And I and they're going to get a lot of mileage out of that. I mean, if, if it's just the six, they'll get a lot of mileage out of it. And I think they'll they'll take that a lot further. So now we know what Earthrise is. We've seen the first wave. How excited are you for wave two, three, four, even though you don't know what it is yet? And what what do you expect to see potentially? You know, it's it's such a weird place where we are as Transformers fans that we've we've just heard about Earthrise and we're already wondering what comes after when it ha Earthrise hasn't even come out. <laughs> We're going to see more Decepticons, right? Because if they're following the pattern from Siege, right? The first wave was 
predominantly Autobots. So outside of Starscream and the repack of Astro Train, we still haven't seen what, what Decepticons we're going to get down this line. And I, I'm interested to see what that's going to be, because what are they going to cover that is Earth based, but also fits in this scheme? Battle Chargers, I guess. And and then what? <laughs> I think, you know, there's there's certainly a lot of room to do more Autobots. I think the Sunstreaker thoughts by most people is a, a good fit. I would like to see that cliff jumper mold become something more than just Bumblebee, maybe Hubcap or Bumper or Glyph or Tap Out. I mean, there's there's certainly places they could take that. You know what? I haven't really given it much thought. I really thought beasts were going to be a thing, and and they might still be. It's since we haven't seen Decepticons yet, uh, we could do that whole you know Carnivac and Snarler, but uh, kind of do Pretender Beasts and and the Decepticon Pretenders, which are much more interesting than the Autobot Pretenders visually. Oh, yes. Yes, they are. Really, what I'm expecting to see are many more of these these weaponizer base guys. You know, that's that was to me the most like, wow, this is something new and crazy when they showed us Earthrise. Yeah. And there, there's a, a strong theming around that, even to, you know, which Autobots they chose. They I mean, they chose, you know, Grapple and Hoist and Wheeljack, which are all kind of like construction guys or guys that build and engineer things. Right. So so there, there's certainly something to be said for the base motif, the the building something motif uh, on the Decepticon side. I don't know if we see that, though. So uh, I also with the leader class, the one thing that's kind of been the pattern with this line since Siege is that the leader toy isn't necessarily a big toy to go toe to toe with something. It's more of a Voyager figure with a whole bunch of stuff to put on it. So that that might also inform whatever the Decepticon uh, at that size class might be. That's a good thought. Very good thought. We'll have to see what what comes next. So, uh, Anthony, I really appreciate you taking the time to share, you know, your experience with us and your expertise being a lifelong Transformers fan by the sound of it. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Where can people follow you other than just coming to TFU.info? Uh, So aside from the website, uh, you can follow me on Twitter. It's usually where I hang out. It's at TFU underscore info. And uh, you can also catch me on YouTube at youtube.com slash TFU info. And, you know, if you listen to TFYLP, then uh, you probably are somewhere where you can listen to my podcast as well. Transformers University, which is uh, just about everywhere fine podcasts are. Awesome. We love to expand the network and, uh, you know, the fandom is vast. Thank you so much, and uh, I think that's a wrap. So that concludes our first special edition of TF Talk Weekly. We hope you enjoyed this format and found out some details from this past weekend's reveals that you may have missed from the news sites. I want to thank Anthony Bricali for taking the time to chat with me candidly about his experiences. If you've never used TFU.info, then it's high time you checked it out and learned how to identify any unknown Transformer toy. Don't forget to email us at podcast at tfylp.com for any feedback, and we'll be back to our regular format next week. The TF Talk Network exists from the efforts of an enthusiastic collection of Transformers fans all across North America and beyond. The concept was created by Duran Land, and the main show, TFYLP, has continued for over 10 years due to his diligence and care. The cast at the TF Talk Network is always growing, so if you have a desire to participate, reach out to us via any of our social platforms or even email us at podcast at tfylp.com. You can directly support the podcast and keep us on the air by becoming a monetary supporter of TFYLP on Patreon. Donations to Patreon are used to cover expenses incurred by running the shows and are not distributed to individual staff members. The TF Talk Network schedule is as follows. TF Talk Weekly usually posts at 5 p.m. on Mondays. Microcaster streams live on the TF Talk Facebook page Tuesday evenings. Ouch My Wallet streams live on Facebook and YouTube Wednesday nights. Cut the Tape episodes launch Fridays at 5. And TFYLP streams live Sundays at noon CST. See you there.